New Life, great to be with you today at the kickoff of a brand new week. Thanks for taking the time to, to lean into God's word with me today. Today, I wanna to talk about uh, the New Testament and titles and identities that God gives us from his word and the importance of living our life in accordance and from who we already are in Christ Jesus. You know, we, we live in a world, a cultural context that really places emphasis on earning the right to become something. You, you have to become something. You have to earn the right to become something, to actually practice something. Let me give you an example. If you need surgery, what you don't want is to go and find someone who just says, wakes up one morning and says, hey, I'm a surgeon, so I'm gonna cut on you. No, that would actually be really problematic. No, you want a person who goes to med school, gets the letters MD, who earned the rights to be a medical doctor or a surgeon, goes through a residency, gets the proper training, and then they are able to do surgery. In our world, you have to earn an identity. You have to earn the right to be something, typically through training. But in the New Testament, the logic is actually the opposite. It doesn't start with uh, trying to be something you're not. It starts with, this is who you are in Jesus, therefore live that way. It starts with identity and action and behavior flows from it, follows it. In fact, we, we see uh, one of the few examples we see uh, that relate to this in our, our secular world is really uh, in the royal family. You know, when a, a royal child is born, they are born with all sorts of titles and privileges and access just from the moment of being born. This is who they are. They are a royal. Now, does that mean overnight they start ruling the nation? No, it doesn't. They, they step into that role over time. And likewise, in our relationship with the Lord, we are given titles uh, from the moment we receive Jesus into our lives, and then we live life from our identity, empowered by the Spirit of God. Today, I want to give you a handful of these titles and what they mean for our lives today. In Galatians chapter 5, verses 1, Paul tells us that we are free. He says this, it is for freedom Christ has set you free. What I want you to know today is that whether you're struggling with sin or not, you are free. In fact, even if you're battling addiction today, you are actually living under the freedom of Christ and freedom is an identity that you carry, a title that you carry. You are a free person in Jesus and Jesus is saying you are empowered to walk free. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 2, we, we, uh, when Paul talks to the church at Corinth, the church at Corinth is one of the most broken, messed up churches in the entire New Testament. But when he identifies them, he doesn't identify them uh, in the opening of his letter according to their brokenness. No, he actually calls them the sanctified, the holy in Christ. It means this, that, that even in your struggle, you are already given the title holy if you are in relationship with Jesus. And because of that, that doesn't mean just keep on sinning. No, it means live holy. You have this identity, you have this title, therefore live holy. Uh, in Philippians chapter three, verses 20, Paul calls us the citizens of heaven. And a citizen of heaven is a person who is carrying culture. They're actually carrying the attributes and culture of heaven to earth, carrying the culture of heaven to their homes, carrying the culture of heaven to their families, carrying the culture of heaven to their workplace, to their church. They aren't carrying the culture of this world, but rather the, the culture of heaven, which is marked by love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Everywhere they go to everyone they meet. You are a citizen of heaven, therefore live like a citizen of heaven. You live as Christ's ambassador so because God has made you his ambassador. You're a representative of Jesus everywhere you go to everyone you meet. Come on, we see in Acts chapter 1-8, we're called Christ's witness. Jesus says, you will be my witnesses Friend, whether you feel scared to witness or evangelize or not, guess what? You're a witness. This is what you signed up for when you received Jesus into your life. You're called to bear witness because you are a witness. Come on, you, you live with a renewed mind because you have the mind of Christ. You're, you're called to uh, uh, position your mind in such a way as fix your mind on Jesus. Get to know Jesus so that your mind is renewed and you live with the mind of Christ. I love this in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 to 21. You are called a new creation. 
Come on, the old is gone, the new has come. I recognize that some days you wake up and all of a sudden you're like, man, I don't feel like a new creation. I don't feel, I feel like the old me. But even in the middle of that, Christ says you are a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Therefore, live in accordance with your identity. Live in accordance with who you are in Jesus. You are a new creation. Come on, you are a child of God. And because of that, you are called to live like a child of your generous and gracious and loving father. Friend, there are many titles that God gives us from the moment of salvation. And even if you don't feel like you're that thing, guess what? God says that you are, and he has given you everything you need to live a life of godliness. Lean into the Holy Spirit today. Ask him for his power to lean into the identity that you have in Jesus Christ. Let me pray over you today. God, I thank you uh, that we don't have to earn something in Christianity. Rather, things are graciously and generously bestowed upon us in Christ Jesus. And I pray over my friends today. I pray an infilling, a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit and your power and that they would hear what you are speaking and declaring over them. Even as I'm praying right now, God, I I think about the story of Peter, where in one moment you call him rock. And you call him rock far before he was stable. And God, I thank you that you see the finished product even in the present moment. So Lord, I pray strength and power over each and every one of my friends today in Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you, church. Have a great week.